Hello, church. It's always good to be with you. Just a quick moment to thank Pastor Ryan for being with us last week. I think it's uh, not only good, but healthy for our church to have different voices and perspectives as we unpack God's word every week. And so we find ourselves at the very last part of our postcard from Jude. And so uh, what's interesting about this part of it is it's uh, it would typically be a part that nobody would pay any attention to. Uh, but we're going to unpack it in a way to share some relevance. So let me just share it with you first. It's called the doxology, which in that day would have been considered a hymn. And so when this letter was read, they would have sung this in part together, right? So this would have been a song, a hymn, very similar to our benediction on Sunday morning. So it's the closing, giving God the glory. You're trying to throw an exclamation point to something uh, like on Sunday morning when I do a benediction, so I waterboard you for 25, 30 minutes. Uh, then we pause, we catch our breath, we sing our praises to God. And then I want to come back with something that is motivating and powerful uh, to not only give glory to God, but to also motivate you for your week. Uh, so this is kind of what this section is. Uh, so Jude writes, beginning in verse 24, To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault, and with great joy to the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. Now, let me just say real quickly, amen is a term we use in the church all the time. It's an affirmative term. So the Hebrew translation for the word amen would be truth. So the reason it comes at the end, it is to validate or verify a truth. So in uh, 2 Corinthians 1.20, it says, no matter how many promises God has made, they are all yes in Christ. They are all yes in Christ. So essentially, when you see amen at the end of something, it is the stamp of validation of truth. You can count on this to be true, the statement to be true. So what's interesting to me about this doxology here at the very end is a couple of things. We know that Jude writes, and right from the very beginning, he said, hey, I wanted to write you about something else. Uh, but because of some bad behavior, some people in your community and some things not going well, I was forced to write this letter. So we know this is not the letter that Jude wanted to write. We know it is the letter he had to write. Are you tracking with me on that? He had to write this letter. False teachers, uh, people that are opposing the ministry, people within the church behaving poorly. He had to write it. Part of what I think happens for all shepherds of churches, myself included, especially at a place like Georgiana, where we are crushing ministry 95% of the time. Uh, a lot of the things that the church does and we do as a body or as a staff, we don't even talk about on Sunday mornings because ministry is happening so fast that we can't even keep up with the celebrations. Uh, that your church, the one that you love, the one for whom Christ is called to this season on this part of Merritt Island, is doing so many God kingdom things that we literally can't Keep up sharing them all with you. Uh, we have to use multiple formats to do that. But here's what I know. We're 95% crushing it. But it, there's about 5% we could be doing better at. And here's the mistake I find a lot of pastors make. They never talk about the 5%. What Jude has done here is I had planned one thing. But the 5% was so compelling to me that I had to come back and address it. Right. So what I find is that most people can handle when things are 90 plus 5 percent good. Uh, let's not deal with the 5 percent. But as a shepherd, I have a responsibility to warn and protect you as as a part of the flock. And if you ignore that 5 percent, how long is it before it's 10 percent and 15 percent? So we just want to address all the issues. We want to make sure that we're all vulnerable, that we're all being held accountable day in and day out. And this is essentially what Jude says right in the beginning. He says, listen, to him who is able, meaning Jesus Christ, is able to do more than we could ever imagine. To him who is able to keep us from what? Stumbling. Right? So this is a letter to prevent what? The flock from stumbling. It was That was the intent. But then he comes back and he says, but I want to be able to do this so I can present you before uh, his, meaning Jesus, glorious presence, without fault and with great joy. You know how it is in your own home when you're proud of your kids? 
like you just are so proud of me. You can't wait to share it with your coworkers or other family members. You take pictures or whatever it is. I know I love getting pictures of Isaac when he's done something spectacular or even when he's having dinner and he's just got food all over his face. It's a good day for me. But you want to celebrate those things. This is what Jude is saying. My goal is to create inside of you a sanctification that allows me to present you as not only faultless, but to present you with great joy. So this doxology, this, this ending to this small little postcard is, is a lot like a big fireworks show, right? So if you know a big fireworks show, if you've ever been to Disney or Didi and I saw a great one this summer in St. Louis, you know, fireworks go off for 20 minutes or so. And then right at the very end, it's like a thousand fireworks go up at the same time. And it's a big explosion. The sky lights up. This is what a doxology is supposed to do. It is to create this awe and wonder. It is to take you to 30,000 feet and say, look how amazing God is. So this concludes the postcard of Jude. So I hope you'll join us next week. We're going to start with Titus and we're going to dig into something. We're going to pick it up in the middle of the book and then come back and start the book later. I hope that intrigues you to join us next week. I love you, church, and I'm thankful for our time together. Amen. Amen.